Hello again. Welcome back to the Mike Pecky's Coaches Show. I'm Brian Dunseth. The coach, Mike Pecky, round three tonight. Mike, how you doing? How am I doing? Hey, it's the Mike Pecky Show. I got my emblem. I got the sweater there. I never ask a question. He's got the earpiece. I'm a pawn in this game, but it will change by the end of the night, Brock. Actually, that. actually, Mike, because you've been so persistent about me getting you a gift and a certain earpiece, I have something for you, my friend. I, I do have a, I, I do have an earpiece for you, but but I don't think you're ready for it. I feel like the Matrix right so now. So I'll just put it right there. We'll come back to it. We uh, we don't think you've earned it yet. So is there any earwax on this thing or? It's brand new. It's brand new. Brand new. Brand new. <laughs> wow. Okay. We're taking a step in the positive so direction. So maybe we can get to next week and get you an earpiece. I don't think so you're ready for Tyler. I don't even want to plug in. I just want to just. You just want to feel it. Yeah. It feels super awkward. It's, you don't I want to. I want to feel awkward. <laughs> um, okay. You and RSL off last week. Um, I started thinking, what, what's it like for Mike Pecky to be a fan? <laughs> Strip it down to its most basic level. First off, if you could pick any team in the world, what would be the team you support most? I think I've answered this last year. It's obviously the Real Monarchs. Um, now the Royals FC, okay. obviously, are, are the second team. I see you got something right, right, <laughs> right, in this, right in this area. You got something right in this area. Yep. What about internationally? International, internationally. Okay. okay, let's go All outside right. the domestic realm of the United States. Well, if I, truth be told, growing up, not much. I think I've spoken about this before as yeah. well. We, we might have had this conversation. Uh, the 250 channels weren't available yeah, when yeah, we were yeah. growing Bunny up. Years. I had the channel U. You turn it to U, and you have those little tiny 65 <laughs> little channels. <laughs> and if I got the Mexican channel, okay. you know, that was scrambled, half scrambled, I used to always watch uh, Man United or Liverpool. Okay. Those are the only two games that were ever on there, maybe once or twice a month. Okay. So going back to my roots, I would say Man United. I, I actually super respect that show oh, because thank you. unfortunately, through all my pain and suffering with Jose Mourinho, I too yeah. am a Man United supporter. So, But nowadays, to be quite honest with you, I'm not, I'm not attached to a team. Okay. I, I'm cliche. I really love watching Barcelona. Really love watching Dortmund. Okay. And any game international. All right, all right. Know. So... Now that we know who Mike Pecky supports, what about Mike Pecky as a dad when he's watching his kids, oh. when he's on the sideline, and that referee makes that terrible call? Uh, has Mike Pecky ever been sent away from the sideline? Well, I have a 13-year-old and a 10-year-old, <laughs> so that's a combination of, what, 16 years of, of youth soccer yeah. if you add them both together. If I have to be very honest with you, 99.9% .9 of the times, I am the silent in okay. the corner, take my chair. My wife knows, do not disturb me. Nobody comes over to talk to me. I'm observing the game. I'm a firm believer. There was an article this week. I don't know if you read it. I forgot his name. He played for the Cosmos, uh, went to Columbia University. Okay. Have you read that article? No, I haven't. He, he, he with NYFC Academy, I believe, their okay. new academy. Um, and he talks about all the things growing up that his parents never made it to one game. Really? Not one game. Didn't know anything about soccer, and he made it to the Cosmos, made it to, you know, All-American at Columbia, uh, and looking at nowadays some of the parents, you know, he, he had a, very, a lot of good things to say, and I could relate to that, because growing up, my father, my father never played soccer, one, one touch in his life, <laughs> but he, he was Pep Guardiola okay. on the sideline, you know, yelling this and that, um, so I am the anti of that. However, have I ever gotten thrown out of the game? There might have been a misunderstanding in 2012 uh, in Middletown, New Jersey. Uh, that was uh, beyond, be, beyond my control. Okay. Uh, I don't think I was kicked out. I, I like to think I voluntarily left. Uh, having said that, that was the only possible incident. The only one? Only possible one. Okay. I'm not confirming it. I'm not denying it. Though. Indoor here? As a, as a player? Oh, Do you got any indoor stories? <laughs> you got any indoor stories for Why us? don't you tell the story if you know it? Oh, I just heard stories just about... a. a one of your first experiences. That, that's, a lot di that's a lot different than youth sports. Oh, We're yeah, talking true, about true. adult indoor soccer when I'm being targeted perhaps because of who I'm I am. I'm just setting you up because I know what's coming. And the referee is trying I to get a rise out of me yes. and I have to stand up for my dignity. Okay. Uh, yeah, there could have been there could have been an instance as well in Utah here. The third, first you're three turning a, a, a weird shade of red. <laughs> I'm getting fired up okay, thinking like about it. the so-called like incident, all right? <laughs> all right. Um, any jazz games? Have you been to jazz games? I have. How many? Actually, I've been to one, okay. but we were I was supposed to go to about three or four, but something came up at the mm -hmm. last minute. My son was actually, my two sons are actually ball boys oh, for, really? for the game that I went to. Nice. Yeah, against the Lakers. Uh, my son, I have a great picture of my son with Lonzo Ball uh, warming up. Okay. Uh, they had the greatest time of their life. Me, 
uh, it, it was the game was awesome. Yeah. The three hours you had to report early to be a ball boy, <laughs> you know, and sit around for two hours, yeah. you know, wasn't wasn't the most fun. But I'm a big fan of the, of the Jazz, to be honest with you. Now that I've moved here, I yeah. love what they're doing. Uh, and as recently as yesterday, my youngest son was saying, "When are we going to a Jazz game?" So Trey. Trey. Pass them out, Trey. Hey, no, pa- we, we, we put that to rest. No, I mean, like, pass out the jazz tickets when he Get, gets give he gets out. Hold. Yeah, he'll, potato, potato. No. Hey, uh, you're on record saying your favorite team to watch is the Real Monarchs. Uh, you just said that, so that's obviously true. Um, <clears throat> but since you got your start here in Utah with the Monarchs, what, 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 does, what does that group, what, what does that team mean to you? It's, it's how can I put this? It was my reintroduction, to be honest with you, after my former job yeah. and after having two years off. Um, the passion that I brought to that job from the first day w- was almost a, a re-falling in love with the game. In fact, when I got the job for RSL, I had a meeting with the players and I thanked them for one specific thing, which is helping me fall, fall in love back with coaching. Yeah. Um, so the one thing I loved about working with those guys and still seeing them now is that they're at a professional level, but they still have another level that they want to get to. Yeah. So whether it looks like it sometimes, whether perhaps Mark Briggs or, or me back then is not happy with the, with the effort, there's always an effort with these guys because yeah. they want to get to the next level. It's just pure. Um, so to me, it's almost like something that I, I started this, uh, last year and I still have my eye wide open for it and, and I love watching it. So since we're talking about him, you brought him up, we should probably just bring him on. So Briggsy, get over here, man. Oh. Head coach of the Real Monarchs, Mark Briggs. He joins... Oh. That was a, uh, was that like a stare down? A little weird. Hey. It was a little hey, bit. Right. That it was like a, That's a respect. you guys, a respect, That's sizing respect. up, sizing up respect. Like How you it. doing, buddy? I'm all right, mate. How are you? All right, okay. so because... Look at the whole time, like, see this? We start having a conversation, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll end up talking right well, now. No, I, 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 well, I've got I've to keep <laughs> the plane in the air, obviously. Um, <coughs> Briggsy, you, Mike picked you up at the airport when you first got to Salt Lake City. What is your... Trying to figure out the right way to word this. <laughs> what is your favorite Mike Pecky moment so far? And it could be super awkward if you got a good one. We're live, well, live on camera, okay? <laughs> Come on, Briggsy, bring it. You got something good? It's a decent question, Danny. That, that, that is a decent question. Put you on the spot. It really has. I think my best moment was... Oh, God, I don't want to know what's going <laughs> we, we lived together. There was myself, okay. Mike, and my three-year-old daughter. And my three-year-old daughter um, isn't shy. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> so um, Mike walked in and was like, dude, your daughter's got to put some clothes on. <laughs> she walk around with a diaper on. And I'm, you know, I don't have daughters, yeah. you know? You're and used to boys. So I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm going, what, how do I react here, you know? I'm, I'm kind of, <laughs> but it's a little girl, you know? It's a little yeah. kid. I'm sitting there going, what do I do here? I said, you got you to gotta, gotta put something on her. She, she loves to walk around in a diaper. So, like, father, like her father. <laughs> I mean, is, that, is that fair? Well, maybe. maybe no maybe. comment there. Maybe. All right, so what, what was, as you guys got to know each other, Mike, what was your first impression of Briggsy? Briggsy, what was your first impression of Mike? Well, you know, when I took the job, I was informed. I didn't know anything about Mark. You know, when I, all the conversation with Craig, he said we hired an, a really good up-and-coming coach, mm. Mark Briggs. And I didn't know Mark Briggs, so while I'm on the phone, I'm going right to the Google thing. Um, and he actually said they thought so highly of him that if I turned down the job, you know, that they would most likely give it to him. And the reason why he didn't get it in the first place right away was because of all what Deloitte's putting into it, and they wanted someone a little more experienced. Mm. Obviously, Mark is capable. You see what he'd done last year. Yeah. So right away, I, I just didn't know anything about him. We had two conversations, I believe, before we met face-to-face, yeah, yeah. and I'm big on first impressions, first reactions. I haven't had a great track record in my life at some point with, with, with some Brits, you know? There's been some Brits that have burned me, you know? Hearing that accent on the other end of the line right away, I'm going, whoa, what's going on that. here? I never knew that. Never knew that. There's a lot of things you don't know. Um, <laughs> but the conversations we had for the first two conversations, it was at first, very briefly, personal life, you know? What were you all about, you know? You married, blah, 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 kids, all this stuff. And then we just dove right into, it was almost like we knew each other for a while on that first conversation. Mm-hmm. This is what I want from preseason. And the one thing I loved about Mark, and I still do, is that whereas someone like Hamas and Alave, who was on our assistant coaching staff, who was mm-hmm. brand new to coaching, yeah. to get Hami to give input or answer a question those first couple of months was like, was like asking my, my, my 10-year-old to eat Brussels sprouts. 
you know? <laughs> Mark, having never met him, you could hear the passion and the knowledge he had because right away he was talking to me about what I was saying and he was giving his input. Mm -hmm. And right away I thought that was awesome, you know? And, and Mark knows as well as all the coaches I work with, I'm not a dictator. You know, it's not a situation that you're going to say something that contradicts me or you're going to give your own opinion that's different and I'm going to fire you or I'm going to yeah. outcast you. I, I thrive on that. So to me, it was on the phone, it was instant connection. And then we met, which we'll talk about, I guess, after. <laughs> but God, yeah, I don't no, know if you have I think, I think there was, a, <laughs> <laughs> there was um, just a connection. Like we spoke on the phone a couple of times. I'd obviously heard of Mike and knew what, what he'd done before. So it was... Um, it was just a connection on the phone and brief conversations. And then when we met, we just kind of hit it off straight away. Mm. Um, Remember the first time we came face to face, Deloitte brought us into a conference room on the second floor. Oh, yeah. I had just gotten off a five hour flight, didn't sleep the night before because I'm moving across the country, yeah. away from my kids. I walk in, not dressed nice at all. Deloitte never told us. He brings us into the second floor. We walk into this meeting room and the entire office staff is there. 40, 50 people. He says a couple of things and he goes, Mike, why don't you say something? And this is like my first introduction. I'm kind of half like this, my hair's everywhere from the plane. And then you could see Mark, it was the funniest thing. Because I'm sitting there, I, I go right into the hall, yeah. happy to be here, this and that, which is all true, but I'm tired. And out of the corner of my eye, Mark is like, <laughs> Mark is like, he was nervous yeah. as hell. Uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. And I know you were saying to yourself, please don't ask me to say something. And of course, Deloitte being Deloitte, uh, thanks Mike. Mark, why don't you come and say something? Oh, it was, it was priceless. It was priceless. I, I, you know, I, when I learned that you have a fear of public speaking outside of just the group in the locker room, yeah. was at, at the Zebra at the opening of Zion's Bank. Yeah. And, and <laughs> the we, sweat. By the way, just so you, like so, I am seated. Everyone's kind of going through the thing. I'm I'm like the devil on the shoulder of Craig Weibel and Mike Pecky and Mark Briggs because I'm kind of hidden out, and I'm just. Banter, just taking shots, messing around, getting them wound up. Hey, what are you going to say? What, don't be nervous. Like, dude, you're, you got this. It's totally fine. Just let it but out. make you sure it. you, and it was hilarious. And Briggsy, the moment they cut Briggsy, it was fantastic. It was I, don't, I don't think Mark has a fear of public speaking. I just, uh, public speaking stinks. You're probably one of the few that really like it. I hate no. public speaking. No, I, I get nervous. Oh, I can't. My leg shakes. Like, uh, it's all over the I'm place. I'm going to start it, asking for a teleprompter when I do what like. What do you need a public? <laughs> because. I, I want to look at everybody and be able to read something, but I'm you not got one big. Right there. But I'm not big. I don't oh. look at that. That's for you. Remember, oh. this is the Mike Pecky show. I've got, but Brian I've, Dunseth is the man. I've got your earpiece. That okay. you, maybe you can have next week. I'll have it in okay. about, about five, ten minutes. <laughs> we'll put that on. Don't worry about it. Um, all right, synergy. Um, you guys both have had a million conversations about what this looks like, finding the right balance between obviously success for Real Salt Lake and Real Monarchs, um, but at the same time, this idea of sharing players with the knowledge that ultimately you guys want to do what's best for the organization top to bottom. How, how, how important is it, this personal relationship, this banter, this friendship that you guys have created organically, that then it bleeds into professionally having the utmost success? And we see with the opening of the season, Mark, uh, with the win and what, six different starters that had come yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not easy. You know, it, it, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to everybody, you know? I mean, we have a system. You yeah. know, and we talk about it a lot. It, it's not easy. And you he's got to prepare. Well, yeah. He's got to spend all week preparing for a team, always... and then you, you parachute in five or six guys for him. <laughs> but you see, I, 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 I try not yeah. to do that. No. I don't think I've done it much. To be fair, to be fair. I give him enough warning. Yeah, Mike's, Mike's, especially speaking to other coaches around the league, yeah. I've, got it, I've got it very good here. Because a lot, a lot hey, of coaches I, I throw players raise, in on a Friday. You know, yeah. I know, yeah. I I'm not in charge of the money. <laughs> a lot of coaches do throw it in on a Friday and yeah. just deal with it. Yeah. Whereas Mike least gives them me, you know, I'm Thursday thinking, evening. Yeah, I'm thinking. <laughs> 11.45. No, I, get, I, get them, I get them on Wednesday and they train with me for the week. So it enables us to prepare. Okay. But in a perfect world, in a perfect world, Monday afternoon, I'm telling him these are the players mm. you're going to have. But that's impossible. No. Injuries could happen. A player that's possibly I'm thinking about, hmm, I'd like to be in the 18, but eh, he could just have a great two days of training yeah. and then we're going to take him. Yeah. You know, but I think Mark and I, as well as, as well as the staff as well, you know, our coaching staff, Elliot, Dan, Craig, you know, we have, we're on the same page enough that I'm never going to leave him hamstrung unless it's, it's, it's unavoidable. Yeah. Um, earlier I did, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did ask him when he first got here because I'm uh, away from the office. I'm in a better mood. Yeah. All right, and I had to ask him. I said, in no, no uncertain words, I said, let me ask you an honest question. I said, have I been a jerk lately for the last two weeks? 
I feel like I have at the office. And he goes, not to me. I was like, thanks, <laughs> that's, that's a good well, answer. Yeah, that's, that's a, a great good answer. answer. Right. Not to me. Well, that's, that is a simplistic yeah. transition. <laughs> not to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, guys, er earlier, obviously we know this, but earlier this year the soccer world lost someone way too young. Um, this is uh, Briggsy and, and, and Mike. This is uh, one that hits home because of, of Liam and his passing, and it happened so tragically and so quickly. Um, you guys have dedicated the season to his memory and being a part of the staff last season with Real Monarchs. Um, how important is this? Uh, I mean, there's never a way to truly do justice to the human being he was or to his family, his children, his friends. Right. Um, but what this means for you and the group inside the locker room? It's funny because um, it's hard to put into words. It was such a surprise. It happened mm -hmm. so quickly. Um, but Saturday, my team talked Saturday. Uh, I went out onto the field in the warm-up. And I could hear people moaning about the field, moaning about this, moaning about that. Mm. And it just kind of, like, Liam's not here anymore. And you guys are moaning about the field's crap or mm. this, that and the other. And um, just kind of hit home that you, you only get one chance and yeah. you have to make the most of it. Um, and I think having, having Liam's initials on the jersey this year will just be something that hopefully he can you know, still be with us because he brought a lot to us last year on, on our staff. How, how did you guys meet? I mean, you, when, when we were talking about Liam and I met him last season, um, you think about this incredible pedigree yeah. uh, of, of a player that is absolutely matched as a person. Yeah. Um, but to see a guy who, you know, had played at United and played at Celtic and played at Leeds and had all these, these incredible life experiences on the field, to see him then take a professional experience to the United States and be a part of the coaching staff here at Real Monarchs. How does something like that even come about? Uh, it's through a friend, actually. Um, me and Liam met years ago back in England um, at a professional footballers association uh, dinner. Uh, so we met then. Um, and we didn't keep in touch much. If we saw one another, it was a, you know, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I saw, it was actually uh, Robbie Keane. Hmm. Um, he was asking, are you interested in a midfielder, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Liam's not going to come to Wilmington Hammerhead. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he says, no, he wants to come to America. Yeah. So I called him up and he, he came over, uh, played for me, and he was captain, and we kind of struck up our friendship again then, spent a lot of time together. Um, and then obviously when Mike moved up to the first team and I got an opportunity to bring in an assistant coach, uh, he was the first one that um, I wanted to bring in for his experience, but also he's just, he, was, he was just a humble human being mm. uh, with unbelievable knowledge. When, when you watched him um, transmit his knowledge yeah. to the players, uh, what I noticed, um, even in the games, it was level-headed, incredible amounts of depth to the knowledge that he was, he was giving, but there was, it was a respect that was earned and not through a stern presence, yeah. but more of, I believe in you. I believe what you're saying to me right now. So I guess ultimately, how, how will he be remembered, both of you, how, how will he would be remembered inside of the organization, top to bottom, and the impact that he had with the group of players? I think for me, I, I, uh, obviously from a friend's standpoint, but from a professional standpoint, um, I've never met anybody who dissected the game like him, mm. uh, down to the minute, minute details, whether that be um, a person's technique, a player's technique, or from a tactical standpoint. He was very good at dissecting the opponent. And for you, Mike? I'm going to just speak very, very briefly out of respect because, you know, I only got to know him a very short period of time. And Mark, you know, Mark said it all there. You know, the one thing with Liam that I loved is that <clears throat> I would never have known he played for Man United. I would never have known he played at the level yeah. he did. He was the most quiet, unassuming, humble person that, uh, you know, you, you would ever meet who had those credentials. Uh, we went up as a staff, uh, both the Monarchs and, and the... Um, uh, RSL up to Deloitte's uh, ranch up in uh, Bear Lake, Bear Lake, Bear yeah, Lake. Bear Lake Utah, yeah. four hour drive. And that was when Liam, shortly, shortly before that Liam got here. And I got to spend more time with him, with everybody on a personal, away from soccer. 
And the way he carries himself on the sidelines is the way he carries himself there as well. Just very respectful. Could have a laugh, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But again, you know, it's the guy in the corner of the room, like Mark said, who is unbelievable tactically, but doesn't say boo, you know? And he's not there for the accolades. You know, if he says to Mark something that works in the field, and it works and they win the game because of it, he's not going to be in the background going, I did that, mm. you know? Yeah. And, and that's one thing that, you know, uh, that I really loved about him. Yeah, uh, obviously our, our, our thoughts and our prayers are with Liam and his family, Real Monarch season, uh, dedicated to him in 2018. Um, big weekend, uh, not only for the Real Monarchs, but Utah Royals. Uh, you guys catch the highlights? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess it's good to know that pro referees still have some issues <laughs> in the NWSL as well. You guys like that? I'll say it for you. Uh, however, their mistake is our cruel humor. Early in the first half, the legend that is Becky Sauerbrunn, uh, well, she took a Nike symbol right to the dome and somehow, to, uh, to add punishment to an immense amount of pain, she was wrongly called for a handball, handling of the ball in the penalty area, shown her yellow card, and the referee decided to point to the spot and <laughs> hand out a penalty to Orlando Pride. So that got us thinking of another memorable face save. Uh, remember this one, the GOAT, Nick Armando, pulled off quite the effort last uh, two years ago against Houston. Point blank attempt off of his face. This one, oh, what a fantastic save. Right off the face. Oh. <laughs> look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Hey, he turned to make sure the ball went out of bounds first, yeah. then he fell. Then That's he a smushed. professional right there. So I ask you two gentlemen, who had the best Scott Sterling impression? Nick Ramondo or Becky Sauerbrunn? Who's Scott Sterling, by the yeah. way? Yeah. <laughs> you haven't seen that yet? I don't know. Maybe I have. See, Tyler? Maybe I when you think maybe, you maybe, become maybe socially it, relevant. I'm, I'm nervous talk. now. It's something that we should <laughs> know. <laughs> should um, know. Should How the heck does he not I'll, know that? I'll pull the phone out. Okay, I'll show we'll you guys afterwards. Phone. All right, so who did it better? Who, who's a better save? Well, I guess <sighs> more gra a, a gratifying save? A I have to go. Save? Listen, mm. I have to go to, twofold here, okay? Yeah. Part of me has to give it to Becky because they got robbed of a point. Oh, terrible. On a great... True, block true. with her face. Um, but I mean, that's what Nikki's paid to do right there. Yeah. You know, take it to the dome. So I'm going to go with Mark decides. <laughs> <laughs> Mike seemed right on the fence. Right yeah. on the fence. Oh. <laughs> now I'm under pressure. Come on, kid. I mean, she was bleeding. Her face, there was blood. I'll go with I'm Becky. I'm going to have to go with Becky because it, yeah. it was recent. Nick, yeah. Nick's paid to do recent. that. Nick, yeah. Nick, that's second nature to Nick. That's his right. role. I, I, I want to say goodbye, but I feel like... Say goodbye. You're, I feel like you're... I don't know, man. Something's going you're, on with you're you You're so suspicious tonight. Yeah. Well, like, that's all for this yeah. edition of Mike. Or is it? Let's see. Or is it? See. Thank Something you, everyone, for joining us. No, 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 oh, no, no. We're not ready. You're I can't not ready, do my right? read yet. Put your thing down. This, is, this is about time oh. that I have to have some sort of... Hold on, hold on. Let me do the mic pick. Some oh. sort of... I need to comment you <laughs> the show a little bit, I think, right? Josh, will you please, if you will? All right. Thank you, sir. All right, guys, listen. I've been doing a lot of thinking. I really am enjoying the show. Is that a clip-on? Of course it is. <laughs> this is my son's <laughs> Catholic school clip-on, all right? Oh, boy. I started thinking about what can we do. Uh-huh. Oh, God. Do something a little interesting here. We're going to play a game. All right, let's play okay? a game. We're going to play a trivia game, oh, all, right? all right? But here's the rules. We are going to play British versus American. Okay. Oxford versus Webster. Terms, hold on, hold on. British just, and American hold terms. On, hold on. Hey, <laughs> you're not in charge anymore. Can I just clarify something really fast? <laughs> yeah. I was in Cal State Fullerton for three semesters. I didn't even, I didn't even declare a These major. will be easy, okay. oh, yeah, yeah. easy oh, questions, but you have to, here's the rule, them, okay? okay? Yeah. There's many terms, many terms that are completely different words okay. in England and in America. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. We're going to start with Mark every time. You know, did you know? You have to know. ask. You have to answer what, what the American term is. What is your piece? It's working. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Tyler, what was that? Okay. You want to hear the rules or not? I'm in charge now. I apologize. Okay? You have to answer answer the question with what the American term is, and you the have to American use an American term. accent. Oh wow. Okay. Then yeah. you will tell. You will give me the answer okay. of the British term. All right. In a British accent. Okay. You'll be awarded a point for the right answer. And if you use the accent, <laughs> and here's the kicker, okay? If you don't know the answer, yeah. damn it. If you don't know the answer, you could steal the answer. So you get two points okay. on one question, okay? All right. Here we go. First ever, Oxford versus Webster. Briggsy versus Dunny. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Start with an easy one. Mark, remember, you American accent. 
This game is won by getting three X's or O's in a row. What is it? Three X's or O's in a row. What is it? Connect full. Oh my gosh. Would you like to steal this? <laughs> yes, I would. Please, go ahead. Tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe, okay. Oh, wow. Well done, that's one nothing for Brian. You don't, how long have you been Wait, here? Wait, do no, don't, don't, don't I get two connect. points? Yeah, no, I no, you have to tell me what the British were. Oh, we're not okay. there yet, all right? <laughs> Chill out, Sorry, all right? I'm just trying See, to, uh, you don't know what oh. tic-tac-toe is? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna sweep this. Can I have the British term for tic-tac-toe? <laughs> it's according to Oxford Dictionary. Got three seconds. Tic-tac-toe. Knots and crosses. It is knots and crosses. Knots and crosses, all right? So it's one nothing, Brian, okay? okay cool. Here we go. You could have taken cool. I'll give you an easier one. He gave me the answer, I appreciate that. 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 was a terrible American accent, by the way. <laughs> Here we go. Second question, easy one, layup. McDonald's is famous for this, it goes with a burger. McDonald's is famous for this, <laughs> it goes with a burger. I'm struggling, my, a bun. Oh my God, not even an American accent. Would you like to steal it? And McDonald's is famous for this. McDonald's what? What do you get at McDonald's besides a burger? Famous for them. I'll steal it. Can I steal it? Can I steal it? Freaking French fries, <laughs> man. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? Well, you got French fries, you got, you got shakes. Oh, so, so, so got McDonald's is more famous for shakes than French fries? That's a good point. <laughs> what is it called in Britain? French fries? What are French fries yeah. called? You got this, don't you? Freedom you, fries. Are you guys nervous or something? Freedom fries. Chips. Oh, chips. yeah, chips. That's right, chips. My God, you guys are despicable. <laughs> All right, let's try to redeem ourselves now. All right, here Start we go. thinking. You've been in America for how long? Six years. You can't even answer that. It takes, it takes them three seconds. You, you're nervous, I've been 40 man. years. Okay. I'm 41, Ready? but I've been in here 40 years. <laughs> it's what you call your female parent in America. In an American accent. Ma. Ma'am. Mother. I'd like <laughs> to steal this one. Would you, you say ma'am? Like ma'am. I, like, I would like to. Ma'am, you're wrong. I steal. would like to oh, steal this cool. and say mother. Mother, I'll accept. Mom, mommy, mother. You're terrible. I lived in North Carolina, so that was the <laughs> accent. <laughs> it's like a mom. In Britain. Me ma. Me ma. No, we're looking for yeah. mum or mummy. What? Me ma. Me ma? What are we? What, that's like a cross between Australia and, I don't know, Shanghai. Me ma. What the heck is I that? I want a blue caravan for me ma. <laughs> hey, what do you mean? This is not Brad going the way Pitt I thought. I thought, I thought you were going to run away with this. Brad Pitt. Okay. <laughs> okay, you ready? Now we're going to get a little more difficult. Oh, God. You put this on your baby so they don't mess themselves. You have a baby. I do. The American term. The American In an American term. accent. What do you put? We just talked about it on the show when Corsica walked around the house. Hey, don't. Do, I got to help him out. What are you doing? Diaper. I'm getting, thank you. Say it again. Diaper. Diaper. That Diaper. was actually not bad. Diaper. Diaper. I'll give you a point there. <laughs> Dunny, what do they call it in Britain? Can I, I steal it? Yeah. After he, after were he you going to give me a hint like you gave this guy a hint? <laughs> okay, it's, it doesn't sound like diaper. <laughs> it doesn't sound like diaper. Three seconds. Uh, um, I don't even know. Eh, would you a like nappy. A, a nappy. nappy. Ah. That's two points. A nappy. Two points. Too much. Okay, we got a couple more questions. A couple more. You guys are really terrible. Terrible. Very good. Really. We're super average at okay. this game. <laughs> Ready for this one? In in America, it's the last crazy night that bridesmaid that that the bridesmaids throw for the for the bride. The last crazy night, the party that they have. What is it called? Oh God. The bridesmaids throw it for the bride. Bachelorette party. You say it one more time. Hurricane accent. <laughs> Bachelorette <laughs> party. Well done. Well done. Well done. We're gonna give him a point there. Okay. <laughs> We're in. Now <laughs> this. Uh, when I looked this up yeah. in the Oxford Dictionary, I almost fell off my chair. Laughing. <laughs> what do they call in Britain? Well, I know a boys' night is a, sh a stag. That's yeah. boys' night. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you're correct. A girls' night, though. Do you know this? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Three. I have no Actually. idea. Say you have no idea in a British accent for me. I have no idea. Well done. That's much Put better than my American accent. Put a steal. A hen night. A hen, a hen, night. hen night. A I hen didn't night. know that. Briggs, you're starting to run away with this. We only I have a couple more. I thought you would have got that one, didn't I? Okay, this is a really I would have got the bachelorette night. <laughs> this is a really, really easy one. Okay. No cursing, okay? Okay. We'll accept two answers from you in America. <laughs> I'm already okay? sweating on this one. Yeah. I'm it's the like, body ooh. part that you're sitting on right now. A the butt. Body. Let's say it again. 
butt. It's not bad accent. Bum. Say it again? Bum. All right, we'll award you two. Well done. Of course, we talk about butts, and you guys get it. <laughs> All right, last question. I believe it's tied right now. Uh, <laughs> sounds about right. OK. Now, this is easy, actually. Nappy. It, flush, no, it flushes and is where you go, number one or number two. Oh, God. I'm, I'm only accepting one English answer. One I'm there. only accepting one answer from you. I'll trade you. I'll say yours, I'll you, you say mine. Yeah, you say mine. Let, we got it. I'm only accepting one answer from you. Toilet. I'm not accepting that answer. You're not going to accept, gonna accept the toilet? I'm not going to accept that answer. For a one and two? That's not what I have written down. Not the urinal? What I wrote you down. Have to have a... It's the room. Bathroom. Bathroom. Sorry, I give him hints. I love this, my boy. <laughs> my man. Okay. Cheers, mate. You're Bathroom. definitely not getting that earpiece right. next week. For you. <laughs> it's where it flushes and is where you go, number one and number two. The John. Hey, John. Would you like to steal it? You're freaking British, man. The restroom. The loo. Oh, the, oh, loo. the loo. Oh, Isn't my God. Isn't the John and the loo the same thing? <laughs> this, might be, this might be the last time we play this game. I brought my clip on, my suede jacket, Blood, by the way. Yeah, no, suede everything. jacket. Station okay. You have just joined light. us for the first ever Oxford versus Webster. <sighs> I'm sure the people that are over at Oxford and Webster are literally crying right now with shame <laughs> from both these guys. Can I blame concussions? You can take it away now. Can since I, it's can your I blame show. concussions? You can blame concussion. Hey, thanks for uh, joining us for the third edition of the Mike Pecky Show. Uh, RSL on the road Friday night kickoff or a pregame show, 5.30 p.m. Remember Saturday, Real Monarchs over at the stadium at Rio Tinto Stadium. Mark Briggs, Mike Pecky, Brian Dunseth. See you next week.